Am I the asshole for not taking the next elevator BCOZ of a woman's fear of my dog? I live in a high rise. Our apartment is very dog friendly. It has a built-in dog park on the lower floor. I take my dog there all the time to do her business. There are like 25 dogs in my building. I have a 8-month-old small dog. She weighs 5 kgs. One day, I had my dog in my arms and she had her leash on. I waited for the elevator and a crowded elevator arrived. A woman immediately started screaming. And I am not exaggerating here. She began screaming hysterically and cowered behind her husband who asked me to take the next elevator. I obliged the first time. But it kept happening over and over. Every time she would scream and cry and ask me to take the next elevator. She complained to our building management about several other dogs in the apartment already. And our building sometimes has elevator issues which means I would wait for several minutes for the next one. So when I ran into her again, I just stepped in and ignored her screaming. Her husband called me an asshole. Am I the asshole here? Not the asshole. If she has a paralyzing fear of dogs, she probably shouldn't live in a dog-friendly apartment. If you only had to do this once, I guess that would be fine, but having to do this multiple times on a regular basis? No. Way too much to ask of you. Not the asshole. Do they just ride the elevator all day looking for dogs to scream at? How does she manage to go outside with dogs everywhere? She needs to get professional help for her issues, and or live somewhere pets aren't allowed. Not the asshole. If she's so deathly afraid of dogs, why move into an obviously dog-friendly apartment? Are there stairs that she could take instead to avoid ever seeing a dog in the elevator? Not the asshole. This seems absolutely unreasonable. They are welcome to get out of the elevator and wait for the next one if they want. There is no reason you should be so inconvenienced for a very normal thing. Am I the asshole for banning my sister-in-law's son from my house until she finds out what's wrong with him? For context, my 33F husband and I host all our family gatherings. We have a 5-year-old daughter. This story also concerns my brother, 37M, and his girlfriend Stacy, 37F. Stacy has a son, George, 7, from a previous relationship. George has severe behavioral problems that became evident from the first time we met him. He's hyperactive, destructive, belligerent, nasty, and his mother can't manage him. Whenever his mother brings him to family events, we are all on high alert. He has to be watched constantly, especially around any other children and animals. We have not had an event with him present where at least one thing hasn't ended up broken. He will break plates, throw food, throw tantrums, screaming and swearing and flopping around on the floor, and more. It's exhausting to have him around and frankly the kid freaks me out. We've all kept out of it because he's not our kid, he's not even my brother's kid, so it's certainly not our place, but our whole family knows there is something not right with him. Earlier this year the family all visited us at our vacation home and George was his usual self. The final straw was him using foul language and saying horrible things to my daughter. My husband stepped in and a crying George played victim to his mother and this caused an argument between my husband and me, and my brother and Stacy. I told Stacy we had absolutely had enough and that her child of the corn would not be allowed back in my house until she found out what was wrong with him and had a plan to manage his behavior going forward. At the time, Everyone supported our decision because they all said it was high time Stacy recognized that George's behavior was not normal, boys will be boys' behavior. We haven't seen them since the summer. About a week ago we were all locking in plans for Christmas, which we planned to spend at a ski resort. Stacy texted me to confirm about plans and I asked her what she had done about George. She said nothing official, but his behavior had been getting better. I told her nothing except some kind of diagnosis from a medical professional and a documented plan to mitigate his behavior would get him back in my house. Stacy has since been complaining to everyone that I'm discriminating against her child and that his behavior has improved. She has also accused me of thinking she a pad mother because she works and of disliking her and George because he is not my brother's child. None of that is true. Everyone is saying I should relent and let them come on the understanding that she is responsible for any damages and will leave if he acts up. I don't want to bend on this because I don't want a drama-filled Christmas, or to have to be the bad guy and kick them out around the holidays with no other plans. Am I the asshole? Edit. People were asking about the resort so to clarify, we own a chalet in the resort and the whole family will be staying at our chalet over the Christmas holidays. Not the asshole but I think requesting a medical diagnosis is a bit much. 
A behavioral plan is totally in order. The diagnosis doesn't matter so much, but the behavior does. She, they if including your brother, has to be able to address his issues so people feel safe and property isn't destroyed. How will you handle tantrums? How will you handle inappropriate, abusive language to others? How will you handle violating rules of physical space? Those are the areas she needs to answer and if she doesn't have a plan or answer then no, they can't come. He's getting better is bullshit. Not the asshole. I personally would cancel on hosting the whole family at the resort this Christmas since everyone is pushing you to cave to Stacy. Make it a private holiday for you. D.H. and Yar daughter. Let your extended family make their own holiday plans and even host George in their homes. Am I the asshole for not buying a car for my daughter when she doesn't even have a driving license? When my son turned 21 we bought him a car. He got his license when he was 16. My daughter recently turned 21 and she was mad that we didn't buy her a car. I told her if she wanted a car she should have got a license. I'm not going to buy a car for her when she doesn't know how to drive. She called me an asshole and left. I don't understand why she wants a car anyway when it can't even be used. You are the asshole. Dot. Op fails to mention until he's pressed in comments several times that he taught his son to drive, paid for driving lessons and helped his son get to the registry for the test. Dot. He refused to do so for his daughter because he was busy. Dot. This guy is an asshole with a favorite child, his son. Am I the asshole for telling my nephew I am ashamed of him and the rest of the family? Here to find out the truth about this. I, 31 male, am married to my wife Ella, 31 female. We have three children together. Our son is seven and our daughters are four and two. A few months ago we learned Ella's sister had a child and that her child had been removed from the home. Ella was contacted about taking in her nephew, Dex, who is also seven. Despite the shock and us not knowing nephew, we chose to bring him into our home in an effort to give him the life Ella and her sister did not have. I never expected us taking nephew in to be a problem. But my family were vocal about us not taking in nephew. This is where I should mention I am black, my wife is white. Our kids together are dark-skinned like me. Dex is white like my wife. Ella's sister, Dee's mom was involved in illegal activities which contributed to Dex's removal. My family acted as though Dex was somehow responsible and doomed, and they told me it was selfish to bring him into a house with my children who will always get the blame for his actions. I was pissed. Dex is seven. Our kids love him and he's already bonded so good with them. He's little. But they treat him like a criminal. They refused to include him in the family. They told me he would not be welcome at family events. So I chose to cut my family out of my life. I told them I would not turn my back on a child who has nobody else, who has done nothing to deserve abandonment. One of my nephews is 15 and he got in touch with me recently to talk. He said he missed me and his cousins and hated that we didn't see each other. I told him I missed him too. I explained that adult issues were complicated sometimes and hopefully we could see each other soon. He told me I could see them if I kicked Dex out we could see each other again, and that Dex is trouble, that he doesn't deserve to tear our family apart. I told him Dex is a child who has nobody else. He told me he's going to be the reason my kids end up in jail, and maybe even me too. I told him it was ridiculous. He told me I was being dumb and it was embarrassing to watch. He then said fuck Dex, he doesn't matter, etc. That's when I snapped. I told him I was ashamed of how he was talking about an innocent kid and I was just as ashamed of the rest of the family who would put so much on a seven-year-old child. I told him I would not dump Dex for them and it only added to how ashamed I was to have them request that repeatedly. My nephew ended the call and straight after I got a message from my sister that I had no right to talk to her child that way. Then the rest of the family joined in. And I can't stop asking myself if it was wrong to say this to my nephew who is a 15-year-old kid. I ask myself if ending the call would have been better because dumping on a kid is perhaps not my finest moment. Am I the asshole? Not the asshole. It sounds like someone put your nephew up to calling you and saying that, trying to guilt you into doing what they wanted. 